I love that we get these attractive sheets in the background. Maybe I should turn the angle so, you know, no one has to look at those. Are we good? Thanks. I think we're okay. We even have the live exhibit in the background for us. This is Barocca. I started drinking it about an hour ago. I've already done a wee and my wee's already luminous in case anyone wanted to know. You're here to play with your ball. Yes, I'm here to give some puppy tips and this is not for you to chew. Right, hello everyone. How are we all doing? I thought I would just do a general puppy tips video and then like interject with any tips I have specifically on Havanese because that, in case that's helpful for anyone. So let's get started. Okay, so getting a puppy is like a bigger thing <laughs> than I think a lot of people expect, including myself, even though I was well researched. If you watch my puppy, puppy blues video, you'll know I struggled for the first well, the first week I've really struggled and then I started to adjust, but it was a big shock to me. So I feel like if I'd have seen a video like this, it might help me a bit, which is why I'm going to make one. I think the number one thing when you first get a puppy to instill from the start is a routine because it will just save your life because they very quickly learn to get into the routine and then you can predict things like when they're going to go to the toilet and when they're going to have a nap and when they're going to go to sleep for the night if you've instilled a routine. I, it saved me honestly so if you can get that going pretty much from the start you'll be set you'll find it so much easier I did not realize that for the first few days but yeah so I like because I work full-time I'm at home obviously and um, because of circumstances of the world all the time um I had to build her routine around me working so you know I'd make sure I got her up so if I run through like the general routine I did with Evie she, when I first got her, she used to wake up about half six, seven-ish. Um, and um, that was kind of worked really well for me because I used to start work about half nine. So it gave me like a good two and a half hours-ish to sort her out in the morning. So what we used to do is, as soon as she woke up, straight out to the garden to go to the toilet. No humping please in this video. By the way, Evie's in season, so if she looks like she's acting a bit weird, although I think she's she's been acting pretty normal, but she is in season. Um, so that's why like, if she humps me, I feel like I was a bit sus at the moment, but um, yeah. Yeah, so I had her in the routine of like, wake up around, around seven, straight out to the garden, wait out there for ages until she did her toileting, came back in, and then we'd do like, when I first got her, I'd feed her four times, um, about eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, four o'clock, and then eight o'clock-ish. That was what the breeder routine was, and I was like, oh, I'll keep her in that at first, and then we can adjust it to like my routine. And then we'd do like a little bit of training. When I first got her, I'd just do training a little and often, like literally five minutes, and then stop, and then I'd do that a few times throughout the day. Then we go for a walk and at that age, I mean when she was like, I got her just before she turned three months. So we would do like a 20 minute walk, 15, 20 minutes, and then she'd come in and she'd sleep for like two hours, <laughs> which doesn't happen anymore. But um, yeah, and then I could get my work, you know, she'd be like, I'd put her in a, back in her crate um, and then she'd sleep while I did my work. And then she'd wake up about half 11ish and then like I could entertain her for a little bit and then it was lunchtime anyway so I'd feed her and then do a bit more training and then again she'd be really tired really quickly so then she'd go back to sleep for another couple of hours and then she'd be up again but usually my mum would get home from work then so then my mum could like entertain her a bit. She used to go into her like puppies have the like zoomies and puppy crazies usually a lot when they're very little and every day without fail about four o'clock Evie would just go mental and that would be it like she would not I could not even try and get her to sleep again before she'd fall asleep for the night so I used to find the evenings a struggle because you'd finish work and I just want to chill out but she was raring to go so like in the evenings I'd just play with her loads, do more training, take her for an evening walk, make sure she'd done all her toileting and uh, obviously f fed her again and then like just try and wind her down and then she used to fall asleep about like early up. Well her sleeping kind of changed but around then she, she used to fall asleep around like half eight. Right so that was the general routine. Obviously it changed very quickly because 
puppies change very quickly so you have to adapt to them but you'll just learn your puppy and like what works for them and what doesn't and as they age what's going to you know be good for them and what's not it will just come to you trust me trust me trust me um but if i break down into like specific things break down into her sleeping so evie sleeps in a crate um and she has done since i got her she still sleeps in one today and there is no time anytime soon do i plan on getting her out of the crate because uh as you can see she's still very interested in everything and she would be shredding my notes right now if i was not here Evie sleeps downstairs in the dining room. She does not sleep in my room with me. That's not because I'm mean, <laughs> that's because I think it's good for her independence because she is very attached to me and people in general, which is nothing wrong with that, but just for her own good because at the moment she doesn't spend that much time by herself because obviously we are home so much. That's like the one time of day really she spends an extended period of time alone and she's fine with it. She doesn't cry or anything. so. It's good for her, I'm gonna maintain it. When I first got her, and this was my rookie mistake, but I would definitely recommend having them sleep in the room with you for like the first week. Um, I was told, oh, if you wanna crate train her and you want her to you know, not sleep in the room with you, just put her where she's gonna sleep, downstairs. Um, just put her in, if she cries, just ignore it. She'll stop crying. That sounded like fine. And the first night I got her, she was absolutely fine. She slept through because I think she was just exhausted from like, obviously everything was new and she was probably just didn't really know what was happening. So she just slept and didn't cry. But from the second night, it was like World War Three, <laughs> um, And I like persevered with it that second night. And then I think the third night was when I was like, oh my God, no, I can't do this. Like, it's not fair. And I realized like, no, that's not fair on her to let her cry it out. So then I moved her into the room um, for the rest of the first week and she was much more happy then and she slept. Um, so I would definitely recommend keeping them in the room with you for the first week until they're settled. And then all I did was gradually phase her out of the room. So like I moved her to the like edge of the room but still in the room with me when I first started to phase her out in the second week. Then the next night I put her like in the hallway um, but still like with the door open. And then I'd shut the door and have her in the hallway and she was fine, Evie, no humping, please. And then I'd um, move her back in the hallway so she was further away. I literally did that for the second week, further and further back until she was in the dining room. Probably, to be honest, over a, like a period of two weeks. So I, like, I'd push her back so she was in the dining room with the door open, then further in there but still with the door open, and all the way to where she now is with the door open until I could shut the door. So it took like two weeks, but she was absolutely fine after that and slept absolutely fine. So that worked. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend the phasing out method for sleep. If especially, you know, if you are crate training and you don't want them to sleep in the room, obviously if you're having them sleep in the room, you don't need to worry about that. Crate training also made it way easier for toilet training because that meant she wouldn't just wee in the night. Uh, she was really good from the start. Like I said, I, I got Evie at 11 weeks, so not that that means she was like, super old compared to when you'd normally get them but even from like three weeks on from eight weeks which is when most people get them like they've already got a bit better bladder control and they can go longer periods of time so I actually and this is very lucky I never had to get up with Evie in the middle of the night to take her to the toilet I had to get up very early in the morning but that was expected but I never had to get up in the middle of the night and I think that's testament to the crate so I would recommend the crate I also used to put her in it for naps in the day when she would nap a lot in the day out of the room, not with me. Um, again, just to build up her independence uh, and just also to leave her undisturbed because I get up and down a lot uh, when I'm working. So to have her in the room with me, I felt was a bit um, unfair. So I used to put her in here actually while I worked um, in her crate to sleep. And that again was fine. Once she was settled, she slept happily in here. Oh, belly rub break. And then if I add in specific to Havanese in this bit, uh, Havanese are very prone to separation anxiety. It, will you leave my notes alone please? Thank you. Um, they are known as Velcro dogs. I can confirm Evie has Velcroed herself to me. She will follow me everywhere I go unless she's extremely tired. Then she'll stay in her bed and watch me though. Or she'll, she'll go to a bit where she can see me walking around but she's like half asleep. Um, but she is 100% a Velcro dog and so, for when I am going to be leaving the house a lot more, which I need to prep her for, 
I just encourage if you have a Havanese maybe to get them a crate and keep them in a separate room at times just so they adjust to not being around you all the time. Uh, I think that will serve them well, especially if you're going to be leaving the house a lot. I mean, you can't really leave them for too long a period of time just for the nature of their breeders. They don't do well alone for a long period of time, but obviously if you're going out for like an hour or two or whatever, um, it's going to be beneficial if they're used to being by themselves for periods of the day. I actually need to build that back up with Evie now because since she's been a bit more trustworthy from about six months, I've let her just chill in her bed in the room with me while I work. But I know she can still sleep, not with me in the room obviously because I keep her in the crate at night away from me. But um, I'm going to start sort of building up her alone time in the day again because I'm seeing her really going out a bit more now that things are easing around us. Uh, lockdown's easing. So yeah, that's what I would encourage for a Havanese. What else? I just random one on treats. When I was training, Evie when she was very little, I tried to stay away from any commercial treats. I still do, to be honest, just because they're full of junk, usually. Um, so I would just give her tiny little bits of cheese and tiny little bits of chicken, um, cooked chicken. Puppies have very sensitive stomachs when they're little. Having these actually have quite strong stomachs, I think, in general, but puppies have quite sensitive stomachs, so commercial treats just aren't ideal for them anyway. Oh, with the Havanese, Specifically, they're obviously very small dogs, they're toy breeds, so they don't need to eat too many treats or they'll gain weight very quickly. So, just to be mindful of what you're giving them. Is a little tip for having these equipment? Let's go on to equipment. I'm really going to try and be as brief as I can because I know there's like a, a lot of stuff to say and it's like, chill out, Sophie. So, for equipment, for walking, Evie has a collar, of course, with my details on, she has a harness. Uh, because that's just for pulling because she's not quite mastered walking on the lead yet we are still training it it doesn't come it's quite I think like probably lead walking at least I found is like been the hardest thing to train and um, just because puppies are so excited all the time that whatever they see when they're out it's very hard to like stop them pulling a lot if they've seen something you know like a bird or a squirrel or I think <laughs> most dogs are like that to be honest throughout their lives um, or people or children or bikes or whatever like it is quite a, a minefield to train a puppy to walk on a lead but she's doing well with that um but yeah I've just I've got her harness just to sort of um stop too much pulling on the neck I go to and from with the harness sometimes I find it easier to lead train her with a, a collar but at the moment especially she has to be on the lead all the time because she's in heat so we're using the harness at the moment just because I think it's a bit more comfortable for her I have an extendable lead and I have a sort of short just street walking lead uh, I don't think that's what it's called but um, I use both because I don't tend to use extendable lead unless I need to put her on the lead in the garden or at the moment because she can't be off the lead I am um, I'm using the extendable lead all the time because obviously I'm just trying to let her still roam around as much as she can uh, but without bolting off to go and mate yes because you're too young you are too young for that. Brushes and combs for dogs. So Evie is a Havanese, as I've said multiple times in this video, and she is very high maintenance to groom. So if you are getting a Havanese, that's just something to consider. I've got three examples of what I used to brush her in my hand. And um, this is a godsend, and not just for Havanese. I think this is good for a lot of um, dogs with sort of wavy and curly coats. She, uh, she has a wavy coat, Havanese can have pretty much all types of coats but she has is a bit wavy but obviously she's she's not in um your standard oh, she's not in your standard Havanese cart I don't think I could ever have her in that she's not a show dog and I'm not uh dedicated to having her in a very long coat but Evie's in a puppy cart at the moment you gonna look at the camera hello good girl um so she's obviously a bit easier to maintain than if she was in her full coat but she does still mat very easily very easily so daily brushing I'd recommend if you can if you've got to have a knees because otherwise you're just setting yourself up for failure <laughs> and uh, if you take them to the groomers and they're matted the groomers will just have to clip the mats out and leave them with little board patches which is not what you want so this saves your life it's called a slicker brush this one has hard bristles you can get them with soft bristles but for the type of fur that have a knees having a lot of dogs you need the stiff bristles so it can brush through and get knots out. Evie's not the biggest fan of being brushed as you can see but usually I distract her with a toy while I do it. So this is what I use all over. Then I sometimes go through with this 
um, sort of wide tooth comb just to see if there are any knots that I've missed um, that I can get out with this but usually I don't need this anymore this is what I used to use when she was a tiny puppy um, because this was a bit intimidating back then I usually go through after with a fine tooth comb just to get out any very tiny knots that I might not be able to get out with this but this is actually very good um, and also this is good around like the ears and anywhere that's a bit more delicate to brush um, so yeah those are my three that I'd recommend for grooming but these aren't just having any specific I think like I said this is recommended for a lot of different types of dogs obviously it just depends on the dog you have and if you have a short haired dog that doesn't need brushing well lucky you <laughs> now I need to put this out of the way before you try and eat them shampoo uh, I use the Johnson's I haven't actually got it on me I forgot but I don't think you need to see it it's a Johnson's one for animals um, how is actually one for all animals it's honey scented but it's really gentle and I've honest I've had it since I've got her and there's still like this much left and I've had her for like god how long like seven coming up to eight months and I've still got shampoo left and she is regularly bathed um again have an ease tip because of the nature of the fur they have they pick up a lot of dirt very easily obviously Evie's white as well so it shows up uh, so with have an ease I tend to bathe Evie once a week sometimes every two weeks if it's not been particularly you know muddy or she's not been anywhere particularly dirty but she just picks up dirt like that so I I bathe her once a week um obviously again it depends on the dog you have how often you'll have to bathe them and also specific to her to specific to having these you usually have to blow dry them afterwards because their fur takes ages to dry and also they're quite tiny so they get very cold very easily if they're wet so unless you live I guess in the Bahamas or somewhere extremely lovely I would recommend blow drying the Havanese after you've washed them actually just to add on I guess in the grooming category um I also brush Evie's teeth she's got a toothbrush that looks like a human toothbrush but it's designed for dogs it's double-ended and this is the toothpaste I use it's liver flavor um I don't know how you say that BFR whatever it looks like that um it doesn't actually smell of liver to me it smells a bit minty but she loves it but she doesn't really let me brush her teeth she sort of chews the toothbrush rather than actually lets me move it but we're working on that I try and do that a few times a week anything else like general things I have entertainment wise for mental stimulation for Evie I've got a few things that I have I'm just looking around because I had one on me and I think she's moved it you've just rolled the ball away that I was going to show them thank you I try and get Evie toys she has like general toys like this rope toy uh, but for mental simulation I try and get her a few things so this is an example it's a treat ball she loves it as you can see and um, you can stick treats in the little grooves and then they roll it around try and get the treats out very handy keeps them entertained also just good because they like to play with it another thing is oh you're actually playing on the thing I need to show excuse me can I just show this this is a snuffle mat it's quite a small one you can get bigger ones and more interesting ones but you can hide treats in the little folds in this and they can forage them out. Foraging is a natural dog behaviour, so you know they enjoy doing that. It's a uh, sniffing, also sniff work. So I'm not a dog trainer at all, so it's completely the wrong term. But sniffing ties them out really easily, especially handy when they're very tiny puppies and you want them to go to sleep. So any sort of sniffing games, even if you just like hide treats while you're out walking and get them to sniff them out, that always helps. Yeah, so it's just toys like that really, anything that you can incorporate treats into. I also use really like basic household things like egg boxes. I put treats in them and shut them and then they have to try and open it and get the treats out. Off lead training, I think a lot of people when they have a new puppy, they're scared to let them off the lead. On the advice of my trainer and from what worked for me, just let them off as soon as possible, as early as possible, the better. I let Evie off at 16 weeks. I should have done it earlier. She's never been a problem off the lead. Even when I let her off at 16 weeks, she never has once bolted from me. Um, but I was really, like, I did not even consider letting her off the lead. When I first got her, I was like, oh, I don't think I'll let her off the lead until she's, like, one. Like, I just didn't think, I just didn't think I was going to do it until she was, like, mature. And the trainer was like, no, 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 let her off, like, now. <laughs> like, I was, I was in a, um... The puppy classes I took her to, and that's another thing I recommend, go to puppy classes, it will save your life, especially if you've never had a dog before, it will get the 
them used to other puppies. She was terrified of other dogs when I first took her into puppy class and she went at 13 weeks. So she was the youngest in the class. It was literally the second week I had her, she went to puppy class and she wanted to get out. Like all she was doing was bolting to the door. Um, but by the second week she was obsessed and loved and she made such good friends there and that's how she like developed her love of other dogs so I 100% recommend puppy classes but the trainer at the class like would go around us each week and like ask us what we'd done with them and there was one week where she was like so how's it been going off the lead and I was like oh my god I haven't let her off the lead and everyone else's puppies were older than her and they'd been off the lead for weeks and I was and she came to me and I was like oh I haven't let her off yet and she was like I mean, you need to let her off like otherwise you're going to be in trouble when she's an adolescent and you let her off and she bolts off because she's never had the freedom before so 100% trust me just let them off have treats with you go somewhere that's quite like secure just in case anything happens I first started by letting her off um in the woods because it's secluded and they can't they kind of want to stick to you in the woods because it's a bit all over the place so I did um the woods and then brought her out onto the common. I trained her recall through her being off the lead. I actually started training her recall in the house. I would like, t I taught her to wait and then I'd leave the room and she'd stay and then I'd go Evie and then get her to come obviously with treats in hand um, and that's how I trained her recall and as soon as she was on it in the house I was, and I was like right okay I'm gonna let her off outside and she was absolutely fine didn't even when they're that little they don't want to run away from you because they're too scared to they want to stick near you so if you can have them off the lead from a young age and like get them used to it by the time they are a bit more unruly they're so used to coming back to you a lot and you know sticking with you and they've been off the lead for ages by that point so they don't think it's a big deal so they're not even going to bother running off so it really worked for me to have her off from a very young age and now she's honestly so reliable off the lead. I try and make sure to reward her when she comes back to me every now and then, not every time because I don't want her to expect a treat every time and she's old enough now to know she should be coming back to me. I used to reward her every time when I first was training her because obviously you need to instill it in them that good things happen when they come back but I still reward her every now and then when she's off the lead just to reinforce still that it's good that she's coming back. I don't want her to get complacent with it and I don't want her to think oh, like nothing good happens when I come back. She just drags me away from the fun of playing with other dogs or whatever. So yeah, off lead training, start it as soon as you can. My trainer said that the first time she took her puppy out, she had her off the lead and I was like, oh. but I can see now and I would do it. If I got another puppy, I would let them off straight away because they're too scared to run off. So trust me, it's fine. You'll be fine. And then I think, to be honest, I've covered most of it in a very long time and I'll edit this down. Have I got anything else to add? Maybe just for Havanese. Um, they can be prone to being quite wary of strangers. So Evie's not a fan if someone new comes to the house, which obviously hasn't happened much in lockdown. So that's kind of unfortunate that she hasn't really got to experience too many people coming in and out of the house. Um, but when someone new does come, she doesn't react very well. All I can recommend is you ignore it and let them suss the person out at their own pace. They are very... Um, Havanese aren't yappy dogs, but they are alert barkers, so they will bark a lot to alert you because they think it's a threat. If you try and teach the quiet command, we're still working on that, but to, like I'm trying to teach her that as soon as she stops barking in that moment, I say quiet and I give her a treat. So I'm trying to teach her the quiet command and kind of to let her know that I, I'm aware of the situation, I've sussed it out and it's fine, she doesn't need to bark. With strangers, if you can try and introduce them to as many new people as you can when they're very little, and obviously it's pandemic permitting at the moment, kind of foiled our plans a bit but she's actually a lot better than she was um I also found that she she doesn't do it as much now I think it might have been a teenager thing and as she's pushing towards adulthood now I think it's it's sort of dwindling but she would bark at strangers on the street a lot anyone we passed any anyone they didn't have to be doing a specific thing or wearing a hat or whatever it was just anyone we passed she would bark at or growl at and it's kind of embarrassing because you're like oh god I promise you they're not aggressive they're just like because she would never go for them she's just she would just bark at them as if to like be like to me that person is coming towards us so to try and get her out of that anytime a person was coming towards us I'd get a treat out and I'd get her to focus on me and the treat and if we pass the person successfully without her barking I'd give her a treat and she genuinely doesn't really bark anymore very very occasionally for example if someone has a walking stick she's a bit funny about it but I can get on board with that because someone coming towards them with a big stick I can understand it might be a bit nerve-wracking but yeah they just have a thing about strangers not all of them but Evie definitely does it's definitely getting better as she gets older but yeah I think that I'm gonna finish there because otherwise it's gonna be way too long and uh, you'll be so bored 
but those are my puppy tips. I hope I covered enough there. There is so much more to be said, but honestly, you could be here all day talking about it. It's like having a baby. So I'm gonna leave it there, but thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, please ask me and I'll try my best to answer them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.